you know, there's such a difference between, you know, um, I'm a Christian and then I'm a follower of Jesus, you know, and, it, and I don't think it should be that way. You should be, it should be, you know, the same statement, but somehow in our American culture, we've, we've seen that they're two different things, you know, like you can, I can have a conversation with Ken and be like, you know, like, oh, he's a real one, you know, like I don't have to worry about like, oh, he's not walking, you know, and, and all this stuff, you know, once you're, I feel like you're, once you're in the battlefield, you get your stripes, you know, would you agree to that? Because you're like, y'all see that like, yo, ministry is like, it's taxing and it's like, you have a big old question mark. You have doubt all the time. You're out here, you know, putting blood, sweat and tears and, and, and time and energy and equity, sweat equity into making sure that the gospel is being spread. Have you guys experienced that in y'all's, in y'all's ministry, Ken? We have. It's been, it's really cool to watch. You know, you talked about the God pyramid scheme earlier. You know, I'm old enough now that I'm seeing the fruit of that, right? You know, uh, you know, it's uh, it's got to be a better way to say that. It's got to be a, a better funnel? way. To, yeah, like you know, it. you like the pyramid like scheme. Keep it there. Yeah. Keep it there. <laughs> yeah. Ponzi, what's that? Ponzi scheme? Ponzi you know, scheme, yeah, yeah. we're running that. But yeah, I mean, I so I know th- some of those guys, the coolest things, you know, you put the effort in, you know, we talk about those uncomfortable environments and I'll, and I'll just share and I hope it's okay to just be kind of frank, but you know, I, when I was, yes. when I was in that youth pastor role, you know, my pastor looked across the desk at me and said, why are you over there in, in the East side serving the black kids? Wow. Those kids aren't coming to our church. Sounds like, remember the Titans. Yeah. And, and I'm just like, I'm like, and I'm thinking to myself, but he, but then it starts instilling doubt in you. Right. Are you, yeah. do, are you doing any good? Are, the, are these kids actually listening to anything you're saying? Mm-hmm. Do they, do they care? Do they respect you enough to, to listen to the message you're sharing from the scriptures? And it's, you know, I'm 50 years old now. So I see guys, we have a guy at, at one of the Mansfield high schools. that was on that first team mm-hmm. that I served as a chaplain and character coach years ago. And guess what? He's leading, helping the FCA now. Right. Nice. And you, you make that investment into people wondering sometimes, will you ever see the fruit of that blood, sweat, and tears that of the standing on the sidelines in the rain at games or in a freezing cold and like, why am I here? What am I doing? Why am I out here? Um, but we talked a little bit about it earlier. Our ministry is such a ministry of presence. Ooh, I like that. Let's stay there. It's a ministry of presence. And if we're not willing to be present in the good times, in the rough times, in the rain, in the freezing cold, in we'll probably be out at games next week when it's 106 sweating like crazy with these kids and with these coaches but that's but they see hey they're with us they're present with us they're part of who we are they care about us enough to they're, they're going to go through the struggles with us and that type of ministry to me is just it's so rewarding because you're not doing ministry on your own terms that's so true you're not doing ministry in comfortable environments you're not doing ministry uh you know you control the narrative, right? You can say it. You can say it. You're not doing a podcast. No, no, right. <laughs> no. So you never know what's going to happen. You never yeah. know what's going to come up, right? And so, are you ready yeah. for that? And do you have an answer? And are you present in a way where uh, you're earning the trust of people that may not trust? quote unquote Christians. And are you having a daily encounter with the presence of God to be able to handle those presence moments? Yes. That happens. Mm. And I was able to experience that in Africa. You know, when you talk about like a real boots on the ground, like needs are here. Are you going to meet those needs? And I was, I was shared my mother-in-law who I got a whole new perspective of her ministry when I was able to see firsthand like what she was doing out there and like the team that she had what they were doing out there with the widows and the orphans and i'm just sitting there thinking like there would literally be somebody knocking every single day on the house we need something we need something and and it's like she would have to go out there and like talk to each individual about the need and she would just keep adding it to like this long uh legal pad list and i'm like the list was so full by the time we're at the end of the trip and i'm looking at her i'm like what are you gonna do about all this She's like, pray for a lot of, a lot of money <laughs> and give it to God. And I was like, yeah, but like, that's a lot of people. Like, what are you going to tell them if that don't come through? She's like, well, the only thing I can do is minister to the one in front of me. Mm. And I was like, Ooh, that's the subtitle. <laughs> that's the subtitle of the book, that's you know? It. Cause it was a hundred percent. Like in that moment, you were able to see like all that other stuff that you think is like, Oh, I'm going to go spread the gospel to many. And they're all going to accept Christ. And it's like, boom. And somebody comes up to you and is like, 
crying because they don't have enough money to eat or enough or enough water and or enough clothing and wants you know they see what you have and they want that for themselves and you have to be able to handle that situation with like grace and like with the love of christ and like lord help me steward my heart posture in the right direction and help me get the words to say in this moment and just teach me like how you would handle the situation you don't experience that until you're present in the in the ministry field that's good that's good there's a saying that i have it's better if you die what do you mean about it? The problem is, is uh, many times we get too caught up in our agenda, but it's better if, if, if we die, die to our agenda, mm -hmm. die to what, where we're trying to like, trying to move too fast. So die so you can be present in the moment. See, if I die, then I, I can't move past right now. That's right? right. And so it's just better if you die, you know, mm -hmm. die, die, to your, die to your flesh, die to yourself, die to your agenda and just say, God, use me. Allow me to be present in this moment. Like he was saying, the, you know, when we're, when we're s serving the, the student, the athlete, the coach, the teacher, um, I can't be thinking about um, how many followers I'm going to get. I, I can't be thinking about how many salvations I'm going to get. I need to die and be present in the moment because if not, that I'm not really following. Mm. I'm trying to lead Christ. That's true. Dang, that's a bar. <laughs> I'm trying to lead him yeah. with my cross, not his cross. So I have to die. And with, with the guys that I mentor and disciple, I tell them like, hey, when I hear them talking and telling me what their thoughts are, it's like, okay, I just need you to die first mm. before you move forward. Thank you so much for supporting our YouTube channel. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe and smash that like button. If you would like to see another short clip from this episode, you can do so here. Or if you want to see the full conversation, you can do so here. And make sure you subscribe on Patreon if you'd like to partner with us. You can do that at the link in the description of this video. Thank you so much, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.